Harry's Wife, Part 93.3 Ten people Harry's wife should really fear. Threats 4 through to 2 Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and you rejoin me for my fascinating run-through of the individuals that Harry's wife should really fear, as I give you the lowdown on why she should fear them, the reasons behind all of that, placed within the context. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section about these individuals. Do you agree? Do you think they should be ranked higher or lower? What else do you see about the individuals that I mention that you would like to comment on? I'll be interested to know your thoughts as we now continue with our countdown and number one gets all the closer. Number four, Prince William. Prince William needs no introduction as to who he is. What is the potential for damage that he could pose? Well, it's significant. Prince William will have witnessed certain behaviours of Harry's wife firsthand, but, moreover, he has the potential to access information, evidence, and observation and recollection from other individuals who hold information. These would include his wife, his brother, and other members of the household staff amongst the royal palaces. He has both the access to the wide array of information and evidence and the authority to compel its provision and also attend to its disclosure. Whilst what he may have witnessed could of itself prove pretty damaging, it's more likely that the whole of the information that he can lay his hands on as heir to the throne and the status by which he operates is going to take him to a position to be able to deliver a stunningly significant blow to Harry's wife. What about his reach? It's substantial. As heir to the throne, he has his own communications set up, and that's readily available to get information out there both in terms of making statements and using the existing social media platforms if necessary, and also ensuring that it is picked up with, and just as importantly, run with, by the various formal media outlets. As heir to the throne, he has that extensive reach, and he has credibility also, commanding, respect, and individuals that will listen to what he puts out there. What about his motivation? for causing damage to Harry's wife. First and foremost, this will be driven by his need to protect the integrity of the throne. Prince William has a huge sense of duty, and he has taken the mantle of being an heir to the throne with maturity and understands its significance. He has taken the tutelage of his grandmother, who has shown incomparable service to the nation to heart and has applied her methodology whilst bringing his own personal understanding and relative youthfulness to the process. His popularity is high and he regards the very institutions he was born into as sacrosanct. Indeed, his simmering rage, which was evident when he declared we are very much not a racist family, demonstrates the level of protectiveness by which he wants to defend the royal family. Furthermore, there's a personal motivation. His own wife, in particular, has suffered as a consequence of the behaviours and his daughter as a consequence of the behaviours of Harry's wife. And whilst it is that sense of duty that is his most overriding factor, it cannot be ignored that there is a personal element to this also. His anger at the behaviour of Harry's wife towards his own wife, his brother, his daughter, his father, his mother-in-law, his grandmother, his grandfather, the list goes on. 
and in the circumstances, there are so many people that are close to Prince William that have been affected by Harry's wife's behaviour that causes it to prick his own emotional empathy to cause him to act. What about demotivating factors? He will not attack he will only engage when engaged himself, and it will take a significant amount to push him to that point before he then unleashes what he can do against Harry's wife. Furthermore, he will always be mindful of protecting his brother and his nephew and niece, and notwithstanding his keen sense of duty, there may well be an inherent tension between protecting the establishment and having regard to those close to him also. In terms of effectiveness, William is well, very well regarded. Seen as statesmanlike, he's untainted by past scandals, unlike his father, and he's of greater relevance than, for instance, his aunt, Princess Anne. He's seen as level-headed and an excellent custodian of the throne. Unlike Prince, unlike Prince Harry, who will have his detractors for his behaviour, as mentioned earlier, if William acts, he will certainly be noticed. Prince William poses a serious threat to Harry's wife and is only held in check by him functioning in a defensive fashion rather than being sent out to attack. Number three, Courtier X. This individual remains anonymous. It is unnecessary to disclose their identity. What is their potential for damage? Substantial. This custodian of knowledge and information is, in effect, what is known as an eminence grease, an individual that walks the corridors of the royal palaces, all-seeing, all-knowing. An extensive network that provides information to this individual, enabling this individual to act behind the scenes. This individual eschews prominence or publicity, preferring to wield their Machiavellian ways in a secretive fashion. Long-serving, adept, and near-untouchable, this string puller has not witnessed the behaviour often first-hand, but rather makes it their business to know everything and have the evidence to back it up should it necess prove necessary to utilise it. In essence, think shades of Francis Urquhart, British version, or Francis Underwood, American version, from the House of Cards, but resides in the House of Windsor. Reach. Moderate. This individual has no personal platform, and is largely unheard of outside certain circles. Even many journalists will not be aware of who this individual is. However, this individual is adept at ensuring that in choice information, once leaked, certainly gets legs and develops momentum once out there. Motivation. This individual despises Harry's wife and all that she stands for and is quite simply motivated by personal malice with regard to her behaviour. The individual regarded her as problematic from the very beginning because she was seen as difficult. And her subsequent behaviours only reinforced this individual's view of her. Her self-indulgent attempts to change the institution that is the royal family were noted and were despised by this individual who has given their entire life to the service of the royal family. Demotivating factors. This eminence grease does not rely upon the grace of favour of anybody with regard to the decisions that are made, and to some extent has an element of loose cannon about them. However, they don't behave in a haphazard fashion. Instead, they are calculated, biding their time appropriately. However, they will preserve their resources and assets as to when it's only necessary to use them. And therefore, if Harry's wife keeps her distance, this individual will not act. Since she decamped to the United States, action was therefore not required. But should she return to the United Kingdom and start her troublemaking once again, then a second incursion will not be countenanced. Effectiveness. Whilst the damage would be substantial, the effect would not actually be immediate with regard to person number three, but rather 
of a domino effect taking time to gather momentum, which also means that because of delay, the effectiveness ultimately might be derailed. This individual is dangerous indeed and is rightly placed at number three. Number two, Trevor Engelson. For those of you not in the know, this is the ex-husband of Harry's wife. What is the damage that he might cause? It's substantial. He can give first-hand experience of the way that he has been treated. In a vein similar to that of Prince Harry, as a devalued and disengaged from intimate partner primary source, he has been subjected to the full range of manipulations that I have mentioned in the section about Prince Harry at number nine. Mr. Engelson has undoubtedly been cheated on, demeaned, invalidated, belittled, subjected to silent treatments, castigated on the receiving end of tantrums, triangulated adversely by malign behaviours. He has run the gauntlet of those behaviours during his marriage, having been sucked in, idolised, seduced, and then, of course, devalued, as is the fate of any intimate partner primary source when it comes to involvement with a narcissist. He is able to talk about his own experience. Undoubtedly, he has evidence of the way that he's been treated and would be supported by testimony from friends and family as to what was done to him. Reach. Significant. Whilst he has no personal platform, he is sufficiently well connected through his work to find favourable outlets that would easily give him a platform should he choose to speak. And undoubtedly, being offered such a platform would result in media outlets across the world wanting to publish what he has to say about his time with Harry's wife. Motivation. Quite simply, revenge. He has been subjected to the behaviours which have made him question himself, diminish his self-esteem, drive down his self-worth and batter his confidence. Those of you that have been the victims of our kind will empathise with what he'll have been through and how that makes him feel. Not all victims are motivated by a desire for revenge, but many have it burning at the heart of them, and this would may, may well motivate him to take action against his ex-wife. Furthermore, he may well be motivated by the fact that he's sick and tired of being the quiet, kind man for too long whilst his ex-wife runs around, unfettered, unshackled, behaving as she does. That he has acted with dignity, that he has kept his mouth shut, whilst she has behaved in a way which has caused his own humiliation, for instance, the returning of the ring, being brought up and placed in the media. Furthermore, a motivating factor may well be his desire to stop her reign of havoc by bringing forth many truths about her behaviour. Demotivating behaviour. He's moved on. Time has passed since he was ensnared by her, and whilst, of course, he is undoubtedly aware of her behaviours and what has been said about him and his marriage to her, he has found happiness with somebody else, and he may be unwilling to jeopardise that by embarking upon a campaign of revenge against her. Nevertheless, like any victim, there will be moments where his own emotional thinking surfaces and seeks to get hold of his narcissistic trait of pride or his empathic trait of justice, and it might well be that in one dark night as he sits there contemplating his past, he is motivated to act. However, his current circumstances do act as a substantial break upon such behaviours, as it appears that he is incredibly happy with his new wife and new life. In terms of effectiveness, he will be believed. His silence so far has commanded respect and will underpin his integrity. No one will see him as suddenly deciding that he's going to be motivated by nastiness or envy or jealousy, but instead the fact that he is kept quiet for such a long period of time will only add credence to what he has to say. He doesn't have the issues that Prince Harry has with regard to credibility being seen as possibly deserving of the treatment that he has experienced from people who are unappreciative and don't understand the narcissistic dynamic. 
Engelson won't be seen as complicit in the behaviours because he simply hasn't got on the tits of the world as a whole. In conclusion, he poses a very dangerous threat to her by reason of his substantial credibility and his first-hand experience of what she's done. But only his new life is stopping him from bringing her down. This concludes part 93.3, and we now get ready for finding out who is number one. Who do you think it is? Let me know you in the comments section. You've heard those counted down through 10 through to 2. Who do you think holds the number one position? Let me read your thoughts and observations as we prepare ourselves for the unveiling of the th number one threat to Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.